Hi, um, welcome to Claire's Cat, and today we're going to talk about Module 2.3 and the World Wide Web. This is for Grade 10 Cat. First of all, when you think of the World Wide Web, you think of a vast collection of hyperlinked interactive documents called web pages. Vast means huge. It is a massive collection. There are tons and tons of web pages situated all over the world that we can link into through the internet. And a website is a group of web pages that are related and they're all stored at the same web address. Websites can be created by anyone. They can cost money to maintain and support. There are ways of making free ones and they belong usually to companies and organizations or special interest groups or even individuals and on the right here is a website that i designed myself on wix and it is for free so what does the structure of a website look like you've usually got a home page this is the study opportunities home page and then when you click on a certain link or a tab, it will take you to another web page. And a web page consists of text and graphics. It can have audio, video and hyperlinks. So a hyperlink is just a built in connection to another website or web page or another resource. And it's indicated as text underlined in blue. Or it could be a blue outline for a graphic, or it can even be a picture. Sometimes it's not blue, it's another color, and that's a hyperlink. We get web servers and webmasters. A web server is just a computer which is connected to the internet and it holds the website. And when somebody requests a certain website, that web server sends it to the computer requesting it and they can look at it. So they, we say that a web server hosts a website. A web master is the person who maintains and develops the website. And you get lots of languages in which web pages are written. HTML is the one we will teach you in CAT. You also get JavaScript, PHP, and Python and others. A web address is stored as a URL or Uniform Resource Locator. When you type a web address, you get a certain web page. And this is how a URL is made up. We have www at the beginning, dot, then the site name, an example is study opportunities, then another dot. Then we have the type of organization. We'll look at more examples on the next slide. And then we have the geographical location. So dot ZA South Africa and so on. So here are examples of types of organizations. Com is a commercial organization. Net is any kind of organization. BIZ is business. EDU is education. GOV is government. ORG is a non-profit organization. CO is company. And AC is academic. Now, examples of geographic abbreviations for country domains. ZA is for South Africa. Now you'll ask, why is it not SA? And there's two reasons. SA is for Saudi Arabia, number one. And ZA was created at a time when Dutch was an official language in South Africa and it was Zuid Africa. You know a lot of these, UK, United Kingdom, AU Australia, and so on. An IP address is a whole lot of numbers with dots in between. 
and it's a numerical address. It uniquely identifies any computer or device connected to the internet or a network. Every single computer connected to the internet has its own IP address. It stands for Internet Protocol. So if you type in 216.58.194.163 in the address bar of a browser, you will come up with Google because that is Google's IP address. Let's look at all the different types of websites. There are many. You get a web portal, which is a starting point for searching the web, but for a specific type of subject. You get some for the news, for the weather, for the sport. You all know about News24. You can go there and search for, for different items of news. You get government web portals, like the Thutong portal, then you get informational websites, and that provides information to the public or customers or interested parties. There's one example is a school website, which provides information to parents and learners. And then you get government institutions, and they have informational websites too. News websites. Um, there are many examples here. Magazines and newspapers often have websites. Then you get business and marketing websites, which contain information about products and services. And here are some examples of them. You can get a personal website. Anyone can create a website. You can share your interests or hobbies or life experiences with the world. And most people use Facebook or Instagram or Twitter to share their ideas, but you can also use other like Wix or so on, and that will allow you to create a whole website for yourself. Then there is a wiki, which is an, a website that allows for collaborative creating and editing of web pages. So people all contribute to this, and you create web pages all based on a certain topic. So anyone can contribute, and that's why your teachers tell you not to use Wikipedia as a reference in your projects, because anyone can put information on there. It, it is not necessarily true. And the access to a wiki is usually free. So Wikipedia is the best example of this. And remember that there's a lot of good information on Wikipedia, but it's not necessarily proven or true because anyone can contribute. You get educational websites, and these offers, offer ways of formal or informal learning by means of tutorials and simulations. And it gives educators good material to teach with. There's How Stuff Works, there's TED-Ed, and a whole lot more. You get entertainment websites, which offer all sorts of entertainment, like YouTube for videos, music websites, sport, gaming, and a lot more. You also get advocacy websites. These are ones that are um, trying to get people on sides for a particular view like the SPCA or the Endangered Wildlife Trust or the Persian Cat Rescue. You also get a web application, which is any application that is accessed only over the internet. And these are not stored on your local computer. An example would be Gmail or Google Calendar. If you use Office 365 on a browser, that is another example, or Google Docs, and so on. Another type of website is called a content aggregator. Now, what does that mean? Aggregator means it's the content in this website has been checked by someone. And this type of website or application gathers different web content 
it gives you news or weather or movie reviews and it comes from different online sources. There are two main types. The first type gathers information from various sources and displays it on its own website. Examples are IMDB and Rotten Tomatoes. And the second type gathers information from various sources and distributes it according to the subscriber's needs. And examples are Flipboard and Feedly. You can do activity one at this stage and pause the video. Let's talk about a web browser. You may use also the five main types of um, brands of web browsers. And what they are there for is to allow you to explore the internet. They use hyperlinks, or you can type the address in the top address bar of your web browser to go to a different web page. Let's look at some features. We have the address or search bar at the top. Next, we have the back button. Then we have the forward button. We have the refresh or reload button. The little house is the home button. Then we've got tabbed browsing. We've got the bookmark or favorite. And we can customize or go to settings with the three dots. A search engine. There are many examples, Google, Yahoo, Bing. And they allow you to search for keywords or phrases that you need information on. Now, for successful searching, decide exactly what you want to find. Then identify the keywords. Use synonyms if you're not finding exactly what you want. Try a different synonym for the word. And remember that there are advanced use search options available for you to get more specific information. And don't forget to give credit where it's due. Your bibliography is essential. And that's the end. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.